Fusion applications for the past uh, four years and uh, since 2014, yeah, 14 ending, I started working on the Fusion applications and did uh, several implementations till now. And uh, uh, coming to my domain expertise, most of my domain expertise is in uh, um, HR specific area, but uh, I have uh, worked on uh, technical areas, even in the finance as well. <clears throat> and it would be good if if I come across, if I know your background a little bit, so that I can uh, plan my technical sessions, where to stress more, which area to stress more, and uh, I can plan accordingly. If uh, if you can start up, if anyone can start up about, uh, I just want. Uh, which domain you are aware of and what are your expectations so i just want to know those two things i like to narayan yeah narayan uh, i'm totally new for this domain um, okay my background is hospitality domain okay uh hi lakshmi this is shiva actually i'm from oracle applications uh, technical background uh, okay. i'm very new to this fusion okay I'm expecting like uh, you to teach us like the way how we are means, uh, how the screens look like means, uh, means we are expecting from basics. Sure. They okay. completely new to this uh, fusion. Okay. 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 Uh, is someone speaking? Narayana. Yes, Narayana. Uh, I'm from the hospital domain. I'm totally new for this fusion. Still, I have some confusion like what is technical and what is functional. Can you sure? I will elaborate on that. Okay, sir. Yeah. Hi, Lakshman. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Shiva. Hi, Shiva. Uh, I have worked on Oracle Labs of Technical Lessons the past four years. Okay, that's great. Okay, I'm moving to ready to moving to vision, vision applications okay perfect so this session will definitely suit for you thank you hi lakshma yeah uh, this is prem nidhi keshav and uh, i am from oracle labs background only r12 i am working in financials okay and uh, my expectations like uh, it's like uh, in r12 now it's very tough to switch it's like and uh, moreover they will ask the questions of technical and i'm actually it's like more of of techno functional background and uh, not working on standard things more but, but it's like I, I was in like support project for from last three years so that's why i am i want to learn this uh, totally new thing of fusion so that it will be easy for me to get the opportunity absolutely yeah this session will let me to work for you as well uh, yeah. okay hi lakshmi this is vishnath okay so i'm tech where i clap technical background so moreover, I'm working more on the finance modules. Okay. Uh, so we are expecting on this course, like um, uh, moreover on the technical side, okay, what vision will cover uh, and okay. what is the areas are available, how to create the reports, what kind of reports, and then what is the possibility space in SAS mode and pass mode on the technical side. Um, okay. Uh, so how to debate now the flex field course context so, um, similarly what is the comparison when we are comparing with Torak labs okay sure. what uh, fusion is having additional features okay. how it implemented and then uh, coming to the forms is there any possibility to build the forms by using ADF in a fast mode and um, uh, possibilities of personalizations and moreover we are looking more of the Tables, which is in Fusion, uh, uh, which is helpful to be created. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is our overall expectations, and more, more over on the uh, importing the data into the Fusion also. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, yes, uh, uh, Shinwas, whatever you spoke, we are going to cover ninety percent of topics. What are you are saying now? So there are ten percent which I am not saying because. Uh, I uh, I will talk about those topics because some of the things like we will we, I'll be showing how to create the forms in ADF, but I may not be showing how to deploy the forms in the Oracle Fusion applications. But I'll be showing it by deploying in the standalone web application, web browser server. 
So we will talk about that more. But what all you have asked, we are going to cover 90 to 95% of those topics. Okay. Okay. Hi, Lakshmi. It's Pradeep here. It's Pradeep. Yeah. So I just wanted to know your name is Lakshmi or Lakshman? Uh, my name is Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Okay. Because some people are calling you Lakshman. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I'm also from EBS background, Oracle EBS and uh, new to Fusion application. So just here to have a good understanding of uh, the ar architecture and framework of Fusions mm -hmm. and the other technical aspects. Sure. I just wanted to know, sorry, before we start, uh, is, do you have any other batches or this is the only timing you're taking right now? Uh, this is the only uh, batch I'm taking right now. Okay, so you don't have anything after 8.30 at the moment? Yes, I don't have anything. All right. Okay, Lakshmi. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah, we are, uh, definitely I'm going to cover the architecture and framework and uh, the technical aspects as well. And uh, basically my sessions, uh, I concentrate more on the basics. Maybe sometimes I may drag a little bit more to make sure that everyone understand the basics. So uh, if any time, any place, do you th if you think that sessions are getting bored, please let me know. My whole concern is to make you understand the basics. Okay, right. Yeah. So is everyone covered or anyone? Leftover, okay. It looks like uh, everyone had their covers. So thank you again for introducing yourself and letting me know your expectations. <clears throat> Let me start with uh, so this PPT I presented in my demo session, and uh, uh, what I want to do now, I will go ahead and cover what are the uh, what are the components I'm going to cover in all our fusion uh, technical sessions and it is an overview what actually we are going to have in our complete technical sessions and uh, our our uh, sessions might go maybe around 35 to 45 hours I would say and uh, uh, I could take uh, additional uh, sessions if, if something is nearly needed and which will benefit every one of us, we can take them additionally. So <clears throat> I'm just repeating what I had in my demo session. So the agenda for today is give an overview of everything. And uh, some of the topics I'm going to go a little faster because I have covered it already in my demo video. You can go through that again. And uh, right. So, Today's session, I will just quickly cover through what is the Fusion application architecture and uh, uh, what is Fusion application basically and what is the Fusion application architecture and uh, how many ways we can deploy the Fusion application over the cloud and uh, what are the difference between SaaS and PaaS model. I will talk about SaaS software as service and platform as service model differences. And once we have seen these fundamentals we can start with what is how how to navigate in the fusion applications and uh, uh, how does the security work and how many ways we can import data into the fusion applications and how many ways you can export data out of the fusion applications and what are the reporting tools available in the fusion applications and how we can extend and customize the fusion applications and also we are going to see how we can develop the fusion user interfaces in the application development framework ADF, which is very popular nowadays. So in this specific step, I was talking to that uh, uh, Shinwas, I guess that in the application development framework, we are going to create the ADF pages, which is actually the way we create in the uh, Fusion applications as well. The frame, the, the, all the pages in the Fusion applications are built on the application development framework. So what I'm going to do in this particular topic is we are going to create an ADF page, a standalone ADF page. We are not extending any existing page using ADF, but we are going to create a standalone ADF page and deploying it on a standalone WebLogic server and we're going to run it. And we're going to 
play around the tasks and task flows in the ADF. Okay, so the reason why we can't deploy it in the Fusion application is the environment what we have in our training session is based on the SaaS environment. So in the SaaS environment, we don't have privilege to access the middleware server. Okay, what is that SaaS and PaaS? I'm going to talk about that in a while. And the last one is workflows in the Fusion application. Basically, it's mostly based on the server service oriented architecture. How we can uh, uh, modify the workflows in the Fusion application, and how does the workflows work in the Fusion applications, and how to configure the Fusion applications. We are going to talk about that. It's just a basic overview. So, what I will do, I will just click. I will just quickly go through uh, uh, the fundamentals and. Uh, I'll go. I'll quickly go through the Fusion applications one, two, three, four, and maybe today most of time we will start. We will spend time on the getting started with the Fusion applications. Okay, that's our agenda today. Let's start with. So, what is a Fusion application? So, Fusion applications can be best described as built on the open standards based platform. What is open standards based platform? Open standards based platform is nothing but it's a technical platform where we can we can use the powerful components which can be which which can be used to implement any kind of application that application doesn't mean a fusion application that can be a standard application that can be any custom application so these are the these are the different technical components what fusion is built on oracle server that is service oriented architecture which is very powerful tool which actually takes care of uh, whole navigation flow between all the applications and uh, we have a blog server where actually we deploy all our java applications as you know this fusion applications all the components all the pages in the fusion applications are built on the java mostly it is java faces using java faces framework most of the pages are built in the fusion applications and as it is java based any java based application should be deployed on a on a server right so any any application so web logic server is the one where we can deploy the java application and all our all our fusion application pages are created in the jdeveloper jdeveloper is nothing but in uh, integration integrated development environment framework it's a framework it's application actually where we can create the different fusion application pages and once the pages are created using jdeveloper we can deploy the pages in the weblogic server which in turn run and show up in the fusion applications actually and we have obi obi again a very powerful reporting yeah. okay. so uh, obi is very powerful reporting tool uh, which 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 utilizes a uh, wide variety of uh, reporting elements the the very rich user interfaces we have a dashboards which is key performance incentive reports and ba publisher reports very number of reports can be built using obiee it's again a very powerful reporting tool it is a part of the fusion technical platform and the absent a portal App Center portal is nothing but where we can create uh, internet websites or where we can create enterprise network sites or where we can create social sites for our company and we can we can make it run in the fusion applications we can make it uh, uh, exposed to the outside public and Web Center content Web Center content is nothing but where the content of enterprise a document management you can say all the document management or content of your websites or our document repository all these things will be there in web center content and web center content web center portal basically depends upon web center content to publish the data to the outside world similarly all the applications depends upon web center content to store the data or derive the documentation from their web center content basically so i'm just giving the fundamentals everything has in-depth concepts an enterprise manager, nothing but it's actually make sure it keep checking the health of each and individual component and how every component is is getting 
uh, uh, is getting executed, how the other comp, how it is talking to other component, it makes sure the health check is being established. And the last one is identity management. Identity in the management, nothing but the creation of the user and assigning the roles and responsibilities to the user. Or if the user got terminated and removing the roles and responsibilities, make the person as active, so full life cycle of, life cycle of user. Uh, creation to termination basically so we're going to talk about these things in detail at a point of time okay so and these are the best best of uh, uh, technical components which on which fusion application has built because of these components we can quick we can quickly configure any kind of user interface that is any kind of uh, java application or any kind of business object or any kind of business processes and we can implement any kind of business logic very quickly and fairly quickly because all the all the uh, functionalities being being uh, uh, categorized are being being distributed across each and individual component if we make use of all these components we can quickly configure any kind of uh, business logic or any kind of uh, business application basically and uh, at the same time, whatever we have built, we can make sure we can reuse of that whenever we need a new processes or a new requirement, and it's easy to maintain the application. That is the reason uh, uh, the functionality is categorized between all these technical components. It's a technical platform and best in business processes. What does it mean? When the Fusion imp started, when Oracle started implementing Fusion application, they started by purchasing all these different modules. They have a legacy Oracle EBS and they bought PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, Siebel's, Oracle On Demand, that's the CRM application. And they got all these applications and they took best of the processes from each and individual, uh, each and individual uh, 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 modules, each and individual uh, applications and they built best in class uh, business processes and they incorporated all those things in the fusion applications that is that is that is one thing and the last one once we have the application built with best in business processes and and based on the open stance based platform how do we deploy that into where do you want to deploy that so oracle has given wide number of deployment options the first thing they said you can deploy it on the public cloud public cloud means where oracle will maintain that for us and they said, I'm going to talk about difference between individual components again. So just for, for, for now, we can understand that public cloud where we can deploy the Fusion application into the cloud and Oracle will take care of the maintenance of it. And private cloud is also where we deploy the Fusion applications in the cloud. Cloud in sense is nothing but where Oracle has a data center. They will have the data center and we take our application and application will deploy it there and what I can like maintain for us. Okay, you can think of like that. So and data, data center in the sense it's a server, right? It's a server, yes. So so they have a server and uh, they will they will have application deployed on the server and what I can will maintain that. And on-premise, on-premise nothing but they will give these processes, I mean, they'll give the fusion application and this platform, both of those components to us and we have to maintain our own server and we have to deploy that applications and those technical components on our infrastructure. That is nothing but on-premise, okay? And the last one is hybrid. Hybrid is nothing but combination of on-premise and cloud. So some of the components you wanted to deploy on your on-premise and some of the components you are going to deploy it on the cloud. That is called hybrid model. So when do we need hybrid model? We, we will come to know uh, about that at a point of time. Okay. Uh, Lakshmi, small question. So I didn't get understanding difference between public cloud and private cloud. May I know the difference? Yeah. So I'm going to talk about this deployment option in my fourth slide. So that there I will come again the difference between each and individual components in detail. Okay. Yeah. But in the case of public cloud or private cloud, both I mean, server will be maintained by Oracle, right? Correct, correct. But there is small difference between the sharing the application, but I will cover that in my fourth slide. Okay, let's 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 give me some more time. Okay, so 
Coming to the Fusion application architecture diagram, what are we have seen in the open standards based platform? I'm going to combine them all together into one place, okay? Before that, for any application, we have a front end user interface and we have application server and we have a database server. And Fusion applications also have the same architecture. The first one, when I say front end user interface, it is nothing but Fusion product. Fusion applications product families. What are Fusion application product families? Fusion application product family is nothing but Oracle, the Oracle, what Oracle did, what our applications we have, they categorized into financial applications, HR applications, or CRM, sales applications, or uh, 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 supply chain management applications. So each, each application set of applications are called as a product families and they differentiated like that. And they have fusion middleware, where actually almost all our technical components we discussed will be residing on the fusion middleware. And last one is Oracle database. Let's see each one individually. So when I say application product families, so these are some of the families what are listed here. Example, human capital management. It is a product and it will have multiple components below here human capital management will have a global human resources talent management workforce efforts workforce maintenance everything is individual sub offerings you can individual functional area i would say so this one if it's a global human resources it will have the list of functionalities talent management will have a list of functionalities same thing financial management project financial management procurement supply chain management, customer relationship management, government, governance risk and compliance. So everything has its own uh, uh, product families and it everything has its own sub offerings basically. So I will talk about what is offering, how we can relate Oracle applications to Oracle Fusion. I will talk about that in a while. And about that, apart from all these product families, we also have Every, every product family will come up with a set of uh, out of the box reports and dashboards and out of the box key performance incentive reports. And also every component can be extended using the Fusion framework. Extending means we can modify the pages or we can customize the pages up to certain limitation. Uh, we can do that. And also there is something called functional setup manager. I'm going to talk about that in detail as well, which actually helps in implementing any of this product family. How it is going to help, we are going to talk about that. So I just want to say this is all the list of products what Oracle has offered out of the Fusion applications. It is nothing but a front-end user interface. And coming to the Fusion middleware, which is very huge, basically, I'm going to divide the Fusion middleware into two parts. One is Oracle Fusion Middleware Infrastructure Components for Fusion Applications. And second thing is Oracle Fusion Middleware Components. So why I'm saying this? Why I'm saying this is, as I said at the beginning, Oracle Fusion is built on the open standards based platform. What does it mean? If we have a Oracle Fusion platform, you can have Fusion applications. When I say Fusion applications, nothing but the Fusion product families. And not only this, we can also have your own custom applications. You can create your own custom applications and you can deploy them on the Fusion middleware if you have a license to the Fusion middleware components. That is the reason what Oracle categorized. Oracle categorized middleware into two parts. One middleware is only for the Fusion application components, Fusion application, Fusion product family components. And second thing is Fusion middleware components means these components can be applicable to any custom application or any, uh, any in-house application which is deployed on the Fusion middleware. Okay, and these middleware components can also be used for the Fusion middleware infrastructure components or Fusion applications too. It can be used in both the places. Okay, so let's see what is the, is that the question? Okay, so what is the fusion middleware infrastructure components for fusion applications? What that is, first component is Oracle Fusion middleware extensions for applications. What does it mean? What does it mean is if you have the fusion application, if you have a product family, okay, let us say if you have a financial applications. 
And if you customize the financial application, example, you took a page and you want to change your properties of some field on the page, or you want to change the background of the background color of the page, or if you want to hide a button in that page, or if you wanted to make a field as read only. So if you are doing some changes on the field on the on the on the page, then that is called you are changing the user interface. Those, those changes are applicable for your application, for the finance application. Those changes will be stored in this Fission middleware as a Fission middleware extension for Fission application that is nothing but user interface shell. Okay, and these, these, these customizations of a page, extensions of a page will be stored in the Fission middleware. How it will be stored? It will be stored in a, an MDS, uh, uh, file in XML formats in the database tables. We will talk about that when we talk about user interface and additional fields. Additional fields, nothing but whatever Fission product families are offering out of the box. Whatever Fission is offering, whatever Oracle uh, is offering the Fission applications out of the box. If you wanted to add more fields, more custom fields, apart from the standard fields, those custom fields are called as the flex fields and we have three kinds of flex fields or additional fields in the fusion application called descriptive flex fields key flex fields and extensible flex fields these if you want to store these additional fields they again will be stored in the fusion middleware okay, these two are extensions of the fusion applications should be coming under this component and there's one more called sorry one more called Oracle Enterprise Scheduler. Oracle Enterprise Scheduler, nothing but if you want to schedule any job. Okay, if you want it, let us say if you wanted to, you want to send data to a bank from your Fusion application, or you want to send data to your payroll system, ADP system. Okay, you want to send data every 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 week, Friday evening. So we have to schedule a job which will pull the data from your Fusion application and send it to the bank or send it to so a payroll vendor or send it to someone else. So if you want to schedule that job, we need to use Oracle Enterprise Scheduler. I would say in Oracle applications, we have something called Oracle Concurrent Manager. So Oracle Concurrent Manager could be same as Oracle Enterprise Scheduler, where we can schedule it, we can define the jobs and schedule the jobs and run the jobs. We can create the request sets and in the request sets, we can have a serial execution, parallel execution, combination of serial and parallel execution. We can do that. Okay. And next one is Oracle Enterprise Crawl and Search Framework. It is very, very powerful uh, 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 feature. So in a, if, if, we, if we have a Oracle product family example, we have a finance application. The finance application has n number of tasks. That is a thousand tasks are there. Let's say creating journal. Uh, if we have a HR application, human capital management, where we can create an employee, or create a job, or create a position, or create a grade. So we have many tasks. So what this enterprise call and search framework offers is it is very powerful uh, search tool which works with another search tool available in the middleware components. I'm going to talk about that in a while. So what you can do, you can just Type the, type the task what you wanted to see. Example, you want to see a task to create employee. If you say type create employee and search, then automatically it will, this framework will crawl and search the whole enterprise application and get the task in the search results. Okay, so that, that makes it uh, much easier to, to, if you don't know the navigation, where to go, and if you wanted to, if you don't know what where to go, you can go here and just type whatever you look for and click the search button. Automatically, it will crawl and search whatever data you're looking for. I'm, not, I'm going to show that in the application very soon. Okay, so these three comes under the Fission middleware components for Fission applications. And coming to the real Fission middleware components, the first one is application development framework, as I spoke. All our Java applications will be created using the application development framework, and we can deploy it on the Oracle WebLogic uh, Oracle WebLogic server. Okay, and Oracle 
soa suit as i said soa suit is uh, 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 is actually uh, is is a ma- is a major middleware component where actually controls the flow between all the applications and uh, uh, it also uh, uh, acts as a uh, acts as a service bus between different between uh, uh, fission middleware infrastructure components to the fission middleware components to the fission applications it 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 has a many purposes uh, it's so actually and most of most of time in our training sessions we will be talking more on the workflows when we talk upon the workflows we come to this sova suit and typically we come on this bpm suit business process manager suit where actually we will be uh, uh, creating the workflows and modifying the existing workflows basically and what a client management as i said it's actually mean takes care of the uh, full cycle of the user creation to user terminations so we will be playing around with identity management many times basically when i talk about security security console this identity management uh, takes place and we are going to take, uh, work around this uh, component very very early and obi is nothing but oracle business intelligence enterprise edition as i said it has a very number of uh, out of the box reports and we have a privilege to create or custom reports and that reports can be a dashboards or kpis or a ba publisher reports that is xml publisher reports we can create a very number of reports and uh, uh, use that oracle data integrator is actually etl2 for the fusion application where if you wanted to uh, integrate uh, with any other application example oracle financials if you are using oracle financials accounting hub module you have to integrate your oracle financials account hub with your on premise ebs application or a people soft application or any other application okay if you wanted to integrate that then uh, there are a couple of ways we can do that one of that is odi where actually you can extract data from the ebs and transform and load into the fusion applications same thing if you wanted to move data from the fusion to outside applications then you can extract data from the fusion application and transform into the respective destination source uh, a specification and load into that system okay so we have if you are using saas model you have a limited access to the oracle data integrator if you have the full license then you can use it at the full extent and you can integrate with any application it's very powerful tool again and oracle secure enterprise search actually it works hand in hand with oracle enterprise call and search framework so here when we do a search as i said when we do a search when we do a search for any task typically what it will do it will search in the fusion applications right what, where this where this task is available right so that task while searching it that task should not be displayed to everyone right if i wanted to let us say if i, if I wanted to uh, go and search for the pay slips i cannot search pay slips just like that i should have access to that specific task i should be fall into that specific uh, uh uh roles and responsibilities that security will be enabled here so it will make sure that that one of the search is happening that the secure search is going to happen and data will be populated accordingly okay and web center portal as i said we can develop the web pages internet pages social sites using this and web center content is a document repository of a, a whole enterprise and http server is nothing but Uh, if you uh, whenever we create a social site or we have internet site or enterprise site so http server is actually which will listens the request whatever we are coming getting from outside system and uh, and while sending and it will respond back to the outside systems with the proper responses and oracle webgate oracle webgate basically it's actually it won't whenever some requests are coming inside our uh, application then oracle webgate is actually make sure whatever is coming inside is a is a is authenticated one is a secured one and make sure once that is secured or authenticated then only it will allow us to it to http server which in turn contacts to the respect to applications and respond back with with the with the proper uh, resolutions 
and wsm policy manager is actually web service uh, uh, policy manager typically for any request that is coming into our application it should it should pass some set of policies our policies maybe our company need a, uh, a, a secured certificate level 5 or our company has uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, security keys uh, enabled while accessing the data are uh, outside the system maybe those cons those policies we can define in the wsm policy manager and uh, uh, that again will have work hand in hand with webgate and http server and the last one is weblogic communication services so basically it is nothing but uh, click and dial so if we have if, we, if in our applications if we have a, a number of web services we can have those web services registered here and if someone comes from outside they will come here and the web service is available here then that web service will get invoked accordingly so it's like a click and dial kind of functionalities so in our sessions we will be covering the application development framework and the bpm obi identity management and uh, web center content and we'll be covering the something with the blogic communication services so remaining things we we can discuss but we cannot go and look into the system because our environment don't have that level of access okay and as i said enterprise manager is another functionality which will allow all the systems to make sure the health health status is good between all the systems and make sure all the systems are properly communicating together so oracle enterprise manager fission applications control which will make sure that uh, fission middleware components are talking together and it also makes sure fission middleware and fission middleware infrastructure component for fission applications are talking together it will make sure everything everything is in right place okay now the last one is fission database we have two types of fission database schemas one again for the fission applications and another one is fission middleware schemas the reason is again the same if we have fission application this schema will make sure all the fission application data is available if you have any custom applications those custom application specific data is available in the fission middleware schemas along with the fission middleware components and the configurations that's why we have Two databases available in the fusion applications now if you connect all these things together we have the product families we have the middleware and we have the database and in the middleware enterprise manager fusion application control make sure that every component is talking to each other similarly there is there is another oracle enterprise manager database control is again there which will make sure these two databases are talking to each other and there is one more thing oracle enterprise manager grid con cloud or control make sure that all the components all these three components are talking together that's this enterprise manager responsibility so it is a overview of the complete architecture of the fusion applications though we won't be talking the individual components in detail i just want to make sure you are aware what is architecture is that's it okay right Coming to the deployment options, as I was saying that we can deploy the cloud, we can deploy the fission applications in four ways, I said. One is public cloud, one is private cloud, one is on-premise, and the last one is hybrid. So what are the difference between that? Okay, okay let us say public cloud. As I said, there will be a data center which will be maintained by the Oracle, okay? and our application will be deployed on this server that's right now in this public cloud what happens is this application is deployed on the data center and company a b company b company c company d company e every one shares the same application all these companies are sharing the same data center and same application okay and they can share the same application but the data of company a is visible to company a only 
and data of company B is visible to company B only. So data visibility is restricted to the respective A, B, C, D, E. Maybe based on the uh, schemas. So the data is visible to the respective companies, but everyone access the same application. Think of a Gmail. If you have a Gmail, if I log into my Gmail, I could see my emails. If someone, if person A logs into Gmail account, person A can see the person A Gmail uh, uh, emails, right? So now if the application, the, the look is same, the functionality is same, the features are same, the way I send email, the same way person A also send email. So application wise it is same, but data is different, right? So in that case, it is shared application and uh, and that is being maintained by the maintained by the Google, the Gmail case. Same thing in this case, the application is uh, uh, is being shared by every every company and maintained by the Oracle and when application is made, shared by everyone, that application is cannot be modified as per the company A needs. Okay, example, uh, application is there. Let us say take a Gmail account and maybe in the Gmail when I want when I wanted to compose an email and when I send an email, maybe I wanted to make sure before sending an email, I wanted to uh, uh, do some a validation maybe not a spell check maybe i wanted to do some different i want to do differently than remaining remaining uh, uh i mean remaining things so if you want to do it differently means you are you need to modify the application actually and that modifications are not allowed in this public cloud because that application is being shared by all these people and if as it is shared it has to be the same thing for everyone and what is the advantage of it? What is the advantage of it? Oracle, Oracle can easily apply the patches on it and Oracle can easily do the upgrades on this uh, application and, uh, uh, and uh, Oracle uh, uh, can easily support this application when our issue arises. Because when our issue arises, the issue will be happening to all the companies and with one fix, that issue can resolve, resolve for all the companies. So that is a public cloud. Okay, it's a shared service basically. It's a shared service, and uh, uh, and customizations are not allowed, and uh, easily upgradable, and uh, easy to support for the Oracle. Okay, so this kind of models most uh, mostly they will call as software as a service because they are giving application uh, uh, application to the end users. Okay. They are giving software as a service to the end users and remaining everything they are taking care. Remaining everything means doing the upgrades or doing the patches or, or fixing the issues, everything they are taking care. So these kind of models are called software as service models. That is where public cloud comes into the picture. Okay, coming to the private cloud. Here what happens, let us say in this case, Company A want to customize the application for their specific needs. Maybe they want to customize their business processes. Okay, if they want to customize that, then here the customizations are not allowed. When the customizations are not allowed, then what the option is? The option is they have to go for higher services, higher premium services. Those premium services will be offered in the private cloud where only company A will have access to the data center. If you see here, all yellow colored people are there who belongs to company A and only the company A people can access this data center. It means they can modify the application as per their needs and uh, they can uh, uh, and they can only see their, their data in this data center. So what is the difference between these two? Here, Oracle is maintaining the application for everyone together. And here, Oracle is maintaining the application only for company A, because it's still a cloud. We are still deploying the, our application in the data center, which is, which is maintained by the Oracle, and only for company A, right? So these kind of services are called platform as a service, because this platform, this data center is offered us as a service 
So they're offering platform as a service, right? So, and here, what is the, what are the disadvantages and advantages? When we, they have given platform as a service, so, and if we customize the application, any customizations Oracle won't support. Only the standard features given out of that product will be supported by the Oracle, remaining everything they want support. But data center, the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, if anything happens to the physical infrastructure, Oracle will still support it. Okay, because the still support the platform, but if coming to the application, if any any customization they won't support, but any standard ish, ap, ish, application issues they will support. Similar to the how we are doing EBS today. Okay, so this is called platform as a service model. And again, last one is on premise. On premise, nothing but where uh, we uh, uh, we buy both the infrastructure sometimes all the infrastructure we, we buy the infrastructure from oracle and also we buy the application from oracle and we deploy everything in on premise in some cases we will have our own infrastructure and we'll get the application and deploy it on our servers okay so when it, when we say when we when we we are deploying in our own server. It means our DBS, our network team, our uh, company has to support that infrastructure. And uh, if you do any customization to our applications, again, Oracle won't support the customizations and uh, any standard issues, Oracle will come and support. That's the difference. And the last one is the hybrid, where I said we have many product families, right? So I would keep some product families in my on-premise and some product families in the cloud. So I maintain both actually. So those things can be called as the uh, hybrid deployment options. So the three, there are four kind of deployment options. And currently, most of projects are going in the SaaS model. I would say 90% uh, are the SaaS model and 10% in the PaaS model, where company has more provision to do more customizations. And also sometimes company can deploy the custom applications or the data center too. Okay, so when we do on the pass, we have more work to do. When we do on the SaaS, we have a limited work to do. That's the simple difference. And coming to the on-premise, it's completely, uh, uh, it's a more work for DBS and networking team. For developers, same work as what we do in the pass, basically. That's the differences. Okay, the next diagram, I just simplified. Uh, what is the difference between SaaS, PaaS, and infrastructure as a service? Infrastructure means in the on-premise, if we buy infrastructure from Oracle, so what is that? What is the service? Infrastructure as a service model. So let us say, in the left side, I have my software package, where if I have my own, uh, if our company has own software package, what they will do? They will have their own network, and will they have own storage, own servers, own virtualization of the servers, own operating system, own middleware, own runtime uh, environment, own database, own application, right? So it is a my company software package, I would say, okay, which is managed by my company. Now, if you wanted to move our application to a SaaS model, how does it work? It means let us say if it is SaaS model. In this case, what happens? Oracle maintains networking, Oracle maintains storage, servers, virtualization, operating system, middleware, runtime, database, and application, right? And everything is maintained by Oracle. So any issues, any, any, any upgrades to any of these things will be taken care of by Oracle itself. And we won't, we won't own anything. Okay, we have just used whatever this product is offering for. What are out of the box features are available, those out of the box features are being used by us, right? Coming to the past model, still Oracle maintains all this infrastructure, operating system, middleware, and runtime. Only we have access to application and database. Here we can customize our application and we can have our own database. We can create tables, we create packages, and we can 
do many things. Okay, but we don't have access to middleware completely, and we don't have access to runtime environment, and we don't have access to the infrastructure. But Oracle still maintains in their own data center those things. We just have application, our own application access and database access. It is a platform and service model. And the last one is infrastructure service model, where I said we will buy infrastructure from Oracle. Sometimes we do. When you buy infrastructure from Oracle, infrastructure nothing but a physical networking, physical storage, physical servers, virtualization between the servers. We just buy these things from Oracle and all the application and database and middleware, everything will be managed by us. We will buy it from Oracle and we deploy it. Anything happens to any of these things, we are responsible for that. And anything happens to the physical structure, then Oracle is responsible for that. Example, if something happens to the storage, Oracle will go and replace it. Will come and replace it basically. So they can do that. And there is one another model where even we have this, this infrastructure will be maintained by ourselves and we buy this application and database and middleware from the fusion and deploy it on our own company. That is that is that is another way where it's complete pure on-premise model where everything will be maintained by us. That's different, uh, uh, different services what uh, Oracle is offering to us. Okay, so yeah, it's the fundamentals what uh, uh, we should know uh, 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 about the cloud when we work on the cloud applications. And as I said, most of time, most of the projects as of now is going on SaaS model. Everything is maintained by the Oracle. We just use out of the box features. Okay, and in the SaaS model. We have a few projects going on, 10% of projects going on, where we can customize the application, where actually uh, the ADF comes into the picture and the middleware SOVA comes into the picture. Okay. And it is the difference between the SaaS and PaaS model. I just uh, mentioned what level of customizations we can do on the SaaS and PaaS model. Like uh, in the SaaS model, uh, uh, we can we can change the user experience. We can uh, we can uh, modify the data fields, and we can tweak the business processes a little bit with little bit configuration with not much coding actually. But in the case of a pass model, we can create our custom applications, and we can deploy our custom applications, our third part applications, and we can do the Java coding and PL SQL coding, and we can have our own database where we can write our PL SQL packages procedures like anything and make sure whenever we create anything that should not break the upgrades that's the important thing we have to take care because if anything breaks in any upgrades or patches it is our responsibility to make sure they are uh, uh, they are taken care what i want to get that so that's a customization perspective that's a simple difference between sas and pass model okay so enough of the fundamentals so let's start with the uh, fusion applications basically so what are we have discussed just till now it's just about the fundamentals just for our knowledge and what are we going to start from now is actually the reality the real thing what we are going to do in the uh, real implementation basically okay uh, let me i have a question uh, what are the uh, versions that are on past as of now because uh, after nine i don't see any Pass that has been released in the market. So, uh, what is the version? You are saying Oracle Pass model? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Oracle, so after release nine, basically release nine till release nine, they have given the uh, Fusion application basically to for us to deploy on our own servers basically. So, after release nine, they haven't, they are not going to give any Fusion applications to us to deploy in our. Uh, on-premise servers or our own servers. So what they said, they'll be on release nine. They're actually maintaining everything on their servers. So if you wanted to go to pass model, as we need to go with the private cloud, and uh, 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 we have to use the use the sub, uh, software what they're offering over their uh, cloud services. So they're not releasing it anything outside. They are just maintaining it on their own, basically. So we just need to go and use their platform, and uh, we can use their application and customize it accordingly. Okay. 
Hi Lakshmi, uh, Pradeep here. Sorry. So as, as I see it uh, in the SaaS model, software as a service, uh, there is no role for technical consultant, isn't it? Uh, not like that. So for uh, the major role comes for the technical consultant is the inbound and outbound integrations. Right. So, so if you are maintaining the, if you are having the SaaS model, so you have your own custom applications and you are maintaining, you are, you are having your product in the cloud as a SaaS service. Okay, let us take an example. You have an EBS, Oracle applications, and you have finance, supply chain management, and HR application. Okay, and you want to move HR application to the cloud. Okay, because you, you are, and as of today, no one is moving completely from the on-premise to the cloud. Basically, everyone is going component by component. Let us say in this case, we have EBS, supply chain management, sorry, finance, supply chain management, HR in the EBS system, and you want to move only HR system to the cloud, SaaS model. In that case, what happens? You have to talk to EBS on daily basis from the cloud. And from the cloud, if you have HR system there, you have to talk to your vendors on weekly basis, your benefit vendors or your payroll vendors or any other third parties. You have to talk on weekly basis. So those, those things will come with inbound and outbound integrations in any fusion implementation, 70% of work, especially in the SaaS model, 70% of work is going through this inbound and outbound integrations. And another area in this inbound and outbound integrations, if you want to talk to your uh, in-house applications dynamically, example, an employee is created in the, in the, in the Fusion application, in the SaaS model. Whenever an employee is created, the employee record good should go to your active directory in your, in your company. How do you talk to your active directory? If you want to talk to your active directory immediately, you have to make sure you use the SOAP web services available out of the cloud. Or you have to rely on your nightly feed, which will go to your company active directory on overnight. Similarly, similarly uh, 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 other thing is if you wanted to modify the business processes in the, uh, in the fusion application, the workflow processes, you have to do something with the business process management, Oracle BPM. It needs some, technical knowledge on doing these configurations. And other thing is creating the security. If you want to create a security in the, in the Fusion applications, so most of security can be done out of the box, job roles or data roles or duty roles or aggregate privileges, but some security roles need a SQL coding to, uh, uh, to create the security profiles, to provide the proper security. We need a, we need a proper SQL coding there. And there is something called Groovy expression, which is also called uh, uh, other thing called expression uh, language, where actually it won't look like a typical programming code, but again, looks like a plain English programming language, which we will be using most of times when we create the, uh, when we do the personalizations or customizations of the fusion applications, or uh, when we create uh, 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 other one is fast formulas. So in HR area, basically most of times people use fast formula to write any programming logic uh, uh, to extract data out of the fusion applications. That that fast formula is again is a typical PL SQL kind of programming. So there are enough places where uh, technicality is needed, but as 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 it's not the heavy technical stuff that we will be doing or heavy programming will be doing the SaaS model. Most of our programming will go during program inbound and outbound uh, integrations basically okay thanks Lakshmi. so that means you can import data from flat files in sas model yeah absolutely we can do we can either okay. import data through flat files or we can import data through web services there are many ways to do that okay thank you yeah okay so <clears throat> yeah yeah we have 30 minutes more so i'm going to start how how the, the the about the fusion applications since beginning so once we decide our company once our company decides that we are going to cloud so basically the first step is 
Oracle, our company uh, administrator, whoever is company administrator will contact uh, Oracle and Oracle will have the agreement between both the parties and uh, Oracle, uh, we will be purchasing the cloud service from the Oracle, right? Once you purchase the cloud service from Oracle, maybe the cloud service means what kind of service you are going to take. Are you going to take the uh, financial services? Are you going to take the uh, HR product families? Are you going to take the supply chain maintenance? Whatever. Are you going to take all the things? Whatever. So you'll be going and buying it. Once you buy it, as it is cloud, which is maintained by Oracle, Oracle has to send us some information to start accessing our application, right? So it is the kind of email what you'll be receiving from our uh, Oracle contact to the administrator of our company. So it say that you have designated as a primary service account and identity domain administrator for your organization's Oracle Fusion HCM cloud service. In this case, they bought HR cloud service. They will just send an email saying that you identified as an administrator. So you can, uh, this is the details, what you need to access your application. So this is the typical email, we will we'll receive it. And this is from this point, we'll start looking into the URLs. So when we start implementing any project, so the first thing we need to receive from your client is this email. This email will have the major details through which we can start accessing the cloud application basically. So coming to this email, so what does it have? It will have the my account administration link. So this account URL typically will have what services you bought from Oracle. They will send the username and temporary password and with the domain. Okay. So if you log into this uh, my account, you will be seeing the types of services what you got. So you will get the so here if you see it is a, a, a HCM production and it's a test domain. So production domain and test domain. And if you click on this uh, uh, service, you could go log into the Fusion application directly. Okay. And this account is also useful for ongoing maintenance. How it happens is administrator, when administrator log into this My Oracle account, administrator can see what services they have and what is the status of the service. Is it green means, okay, no outages, everything is going good. If something orange means something is going wrong or some outage is happening or something went wrong. And it will also have a report. If you click on this report, it will open up how many users are logging per each day. For Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it will, it will give the status of it. And also it gives a load time. Is load time is good. If Tuesday load time is, uh, Thursday load time is blue means it's, it is it is running well. If it is gray means it was not loading, maybe it was not as fast as we we're expecting. So this account is also useful to look at the status in a all of the applications and also pull out some reports related to the application like how many employees or how many managers logged in or how many employees logged in, how many administrators logged in and what is the status of the application, everything. Okay. Now, in continuation to this email, and it also have the service URL link. So as I said, when you click on this uh, service, it actually go to the Fusion application. The same URL will be there in the email as well. They will provide a My Service URL as well. If you click on this one, it automatically goes into the Fusion applications. And you can log into the Fusion applications and you can, uh, 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 you can start doing the work. We'll talk about it in a while. Okay, so this is the primary email, which typically uh, 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 typically needed to begin with. We should know these URLs to start our implementation, basically. Okay. Now, again, we have uh, in these services, we have uh, for each service also, we can look at the status. So as I said, if, if we have test instance, in test instance, we can look at uh, unique users login and page load time, total page views. In HR, how many views are happening? So we can we can look at uh, at each service level details as well. Okay, right. Once we got the URL, and once we got the URL, and uh, once we click on this, typically what is going to happen? We'll be going. We'll be logging into this 
Fusion application. So I'm into the Fusion application now. So I, I will get the example. Let me log out and log in again. So once I get the URL through the email, so I will get this. Okay. So let me show you this. So once you log into that uh, URL, you, they will be sending the username and password, like uh, what I was saying here, username and username and temporary password. So you have to go here, username and password, and click on it. Then typically you will be logging into the Fusion applications. So it is a home page, or also called dashboard page, where we can have our, uh, our custom reports. We will talk about this my dashboard page in detail. I'm going home. So here it is a fusion applications. So whatever user they have given that user is the administrator will have most of the privileges needed for that user and all the respective icons will come up here. Okay, so now we'll talk about the navigation in detail. Now, so once we have that, uh, 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 once we have that logged in, now what we need to understand about the fusion application what we need to understand is what we are what we are going to do with this fusion applications so we should know what is there in this in this fusion application so what is there in sense as i was saying at that in our architecture when i was saying we have a product families we should know what product families we have in this application okay administrator know that okay we bought hr so we need to implement hr or we bought finance, we should implement finance. We should have both, we should implement both. So how do we know which one is which one is licensed in this instance, okay? For that, typically we have something called offerings, okay? Before going to offerings, how do we know which one we have a license, okay? So before I talk about navigation of individual things, let us see which one we are licensed in the Fusion application, okay? To know that you have to go to your navigator it is called navigator in the navigator we have something called my enterprise in the my enterprise we have something called offerings and subscriptions if you click on the subscriptions in the subscriptions you can see you can show subscribed and we have we are subscribed to these two modules Okay, so it is Oracle Fusion Student Management Cloud Service because this instance is for demos only. That is the reason it is showing as Fusion Student Management Cloud Service, which actually includes almost all the modules. Typically, if we if it is our company and if we our company bought this subscription, typically it will have Oracle Fusion HCM Cloud Service or Oracle Fusion financial cloud service or Oracle Fusion supply chain management cloud service. It will be like that and it will say that subscription type as subscribed. Okay, so it means we are subscribed to these two modules, to two offerings, two uh, product families basically. Okay, right. Okay, that's fine. We were subscribed to this. What next? What next is we need to know how to implement that. So before implementing that, what we need to understand, we have to understand some basic components of the Fusion applications, right? So the first thing is called offering, okay? So if I go back to my product families, when I was talking about my product families, I was showing, uh, I was showing each product family has some sub components financial management has general ledger payables and assets account receivables collections or expenses right so each of these called offerings each of these are called offerings okay when you buy the service that service will come with a list of offerings okay and each offering is also need a license Okay, so once we have that license enabled for each offering, then only we can use that offering. So offering, you can you can think of offering as 
as a you can think it as a uh, a responsibility in the EBS. Okay, so we have offerings. We have offerings, and uh, those offerings. Let me go there. Okay, we have offerings. We have a list of offerings, and every offering will say whether it is subscribed or not. So how do we know that? Again, go back to the same place where we went to enterprise and go to click on offerings. If you click on the offerings, it will say list of offerings enabled for us. So there's a list of offerings enabled for us. Financial accounting help is enabled for us. Okay, and uh, 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 supply chain management is enabled and workforce deployment is HR specific uh, thing is enabled. So it will show status as enabled, and it is the beginning point for us to look at what this offering is giving out of the fusion applications and how to start implement that. Okay, now every offering, let us say financial accounting help. So every offering will have uh, futures. Okay, so if you click on that, if you click on that, uh, uh, so if you click on that, if you click on offering and you click on opt in features, it will have features and functional areas. So what does it mean? Fusion Accounting Hub is an offering which comes along with general ledger, accounting, coexistence, and intercompany. And these are the list of sub offerings or, or I would say functional areas which we can be used in the financial hub. And each functional areas will have a list of features. General ledger, what future I can opt in and I can opt out. So do I need to configure general email notifications? Do I need to enable this feature or not? That is called feature. Feature is opt in and opt out kind of thing. And uh, these functional areas where actually we can start the real implementation. If you click general ledger and if you click on the setup, it will say what steps we need to do to implement this general ledger functional area. Okay, so general ledger to implement general ledger, we have to implement, we have to do all these tasks. Okay, and these tasks will say what is required tasks and what is not required tasks. Okay, if you say all tasks, it will show all tasks. If you say required task, these are the required setups we need to do to implement the general ledger. Okay, so implement the financial accounting hub in a whole. We have to we have to follow all these steps. If you want to implement general ledger, we have to follow these steps. If you want to implement account existence, we have to follow these steps. If you see here, to implement a fusion accounting hub, there are many functional areas. Out of the functional areas, some of them are not having asterisk. What does it mean? They're not required. They're not required to implement it. And whatever is mentioned as asterisk, they are required to implement it. Okay, so it mentions the list of tasks to be implemented. So that is the way we can confirm how to, that is the way Oracle has given how to start implementing any module basically. Okay, so I'm just going back to my navigation again. So as I said, it is an offering and these are the functional areas and every functional area has a future where we can opt in and opt out. If you want that, we can go there. If you don't want example, it is one, uh, this offering actually workforce deployment, workforce deployment basically where we implement HR uh, module. In the global HR module, we can implement payroll, absence, workforce scheduling, all these modules. And in the payroll, if you go to futures, I can implement US payroll or not, UK payroll or not, Canada payroll or not, it's a future. I can opt in and opt out, right? So once we click on the functional areas, we could see list of tasks, what they can do and what is required and what is not required, okay? And hypothetically, I had given a sales uh, uh, domain here. If a sales is offering and the sales offering will have a list of uh, functional areas, and this functional area will have a future where they, either can, we can opt in or opt out. Our sales offering itself has a list of futures where we can opt in and opt out. 
okay this is how the typical uh, 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 implementation begin with same thing fusion accounting hub where we have the list of features we can enable it at accounting hub level or we have the list of functional areas accounting exist coexistence and intercompany and intercompany we have the transaction business intelligence functional area okay this is the typical implementation uh, uh, to start the implementation this is what we need to understand what features we need to opt in opt out and what functional areas we have to take okay so I will go a little more further, two more slides on how typically we need to start the implementation. Typically we don't, uh, for a technical perspective, we don't need it, but uh, for few components, uh, basically to do the inbound and outbound integrations, if you know what steps are involved to implement any project, then you could easily identify where the inbound and outbound integration steps will come and we know where exactly we need to uh, uh, play our role. Right, so once we have, once we know what offerings are there and uh, uh, what features we need to enable and what function areas we have to work on, typically what Oracle has given, Oracle has given something called functional setup manager. This functional setup manager, it typically helps us to create an implementation project and to assign tasks to an individual owners and make sure we can keep tracking of the progress of each task and make sure the project is completely executed. It's a software, basically you can think of software. It's a project management software what Oracle has given out of the box. You can create a project and it's a single interface, it's a guided process and we can configure what offerings we need to implement and within the offerings, what functional areas we have to implement and within that, what are the business objects we have to import and export? And also it will give us the status of where we are. Where is our project is? Is our project, uh, is it 80% completion or 70% completion? Or who is owning what task and where the task is not completed? So all those things will be given in the functional setup manager. Typically, I won't, uh, I mean, I won't go into the details. Basically, I'm just giving you an overview. So if we have managed implementation projects, typically here we can create a project. Typically I can, I can open some project which is already available here. Example, it is a project someone has created. So in this project, basically they have the, uh, uh, they have the list of, list of tasks. Maybe they're trying to implement, uh, I don't know, they didn't give anything. So let me create one for us. So I want to implement a project example. I want to implement finance. Okay, I'm just saying this. Okay, and uh, who is the owner of this project? Okay, currently as I am logged with this my HCM underscore IMP 11, I'm getting assigned to this. I can assign to any individual user. I can assign to uh, some person. Some person I can assign to some John Anderson. Okay, and what is the start date of the project? T28. Next. So here I'm going next. I can choose what I'm trying to implement. I want to implement Fusion Accounting Hub. I want to implement this. So just include it. Okay, and then and out of this Fusion Accounting Hub, are you going to implement account coexistence and intercompany? I will choose both. And save and open project. And typically, it will open up how the implementation to begin with. So it says that so Fusion Accounting Hub. So we have to implement this too. We have to follow all these tasks lists. We have to define common application configuration for Accounting Hub. Within that, we have the list of subtasks. Everything can be done in the proper order. So Oracle has given out of the box project management software where we can start implementing our projects basically. And we can assign, assign the tasks to the respective candidates. We can assign, if we want to assign this task to someone, I can go here and click assign tasks. I can assign tasks to uh, uh, some user. I can assign to some uh, uh, 
I can I can search for someone, and I can uh, I can assign it to that respective person. Okay, so it means that this person is responsible uh, to execute that project. So typically, it's a, it's a it's an entire different uh, concept to talk about this uh, 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 functional set of manager. Basically, you have to understand if you want to start any project, it is a way to start the project. Create a create a, create a project and identify what tasks to be create done, and what tasks to be created, what tasks to be executed, and what project what uh, uh, module you want to execute. If you think that this project may not need the defined budget compensation, just go and delete it. If you think you don't need it, just do delete it. Okay. And whatever components are necessary, example, if you don't, if the company don't need the uh, uh, main as intercompany system options, you can just go and delete it. So whatever is needed, your project manager will identify and list out the task here and and assign the task to the respective candidates, and we have to follow the respective task. And keep track of the status. Okay, right. So this is a simple diagram where actually the typical application implementation life cycle. This is how it happens. We can plan what offerings we need to uh, implement and configure. So uh, within the offerings, what uh, features we have to opt in, when what features we should not opt out. We can, we have to think it off. And we had to implement it. Implementation. Nothing but created the implementation project and uh, 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 identify the uh, tasks and task list that should be executed as part of the project. And and each task may have the objects which where we need to import the data from external systems or export the data from our Fusion applications. So those. Uh, 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 those import and export functionality is available and also this import and export functionality is also available to export the configurations out of the test instance to production instance or production to uh, our stage to other instance we can also move the configurations between the multiple systems using this uh, functional setup manager software basically so we can do that as well okay and uh, yeah, once we have this, we can uh, once it is uh, uh, once the project is completed, it will be deployed in the application automatically. And in the ongoing maintenance, you can uh, if you if the your finance is implemented, and maybe later later a month you need to implement finance for China. Example, I'm saying to implement China, maybe you need to create a separate project for China, and that China may not may not need all the tasks to be executed maybe they need some set of core tasks to be executed what you can do you can create your own project you can create your own project and uh, uh, maybe china project and you can take everything whatever is not needed and keep only the specific things are needed and uh, execute the project so uh, that's the way to start with to any uh, uh, any uh, project so what i will say i will just take a break here and uh, um, I will take a couple of questions now and I will continue talking more in detail like what is the typical, what is this page, how the navigation is, what each component is called and uh, how each one will work and uh, many other things. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, shoot me out. Okay. Uh, uh... Hi Lakshmi, this is Vishwanath. Yes, Vishwanath. Uh, so to be understood more on the SaaS and FAS on the technical side, mm -hmm. okay, so what level of changes we can do? Suppose on the page, so so you told me that okay, we can't do any customizations. Mm -hmm. So in this case, so okay, can we do how much level of uh, personalizations we can do on the So if it is a SaaS model, so what we can uh, what level of things we can do, right? We can change properties of any component available anywhere in the screens. Okay, let us say I went to I'm going to create a new person. Example, I'm saying. So if I'm going to create a new person, hire an employee. So example, if I go here, the list of tasks are here. So I wanted to let me show that again. 
I'm going to talk about the navigation again. So for, for Vishnu's question, I'm just going faster. So I have a panel here, list of components. So if I wanted to modify, maybe if I wanted to uh, take out some components, I can take out. Or, uh, uh, or if I want to hide out some components, I can hide out. Or uh, uh, in this example, if I hire an employee, we have the try and stop here. If you have a try and stop, and if you wanted to take out any try and stop in the navigation flow, you can do that. And uh, uh, if you wanted to control the behavior, example, if you choose this value here, I wanted to get different value here, depending the depending upon the field level. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, one field behavior should be changed based on other field behavior. Okay, and. Uh, 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 if you wanted to modify this pane, the pane format, you can modify that. So think of like this: whatever is not affecting the business processes, and whatever we can we can play around with the user interface, everything can be done. Okay, until unless it should not impact the impact the business underlying business processes. Okay, example: to hire an employee, legal employer is mandatory. Okay, so taking out legal employer is not an option. Okay, and uh, uh, to hire an employer, personal information try and stop is mandatory. Taking out this personal information is not an option. Okay, any the, any user interface modification can be done on the page until unless it won't impact the out of the box business process. Rashmi, can I hide the uh, unwanted, like uh, non mandatory fields yep, in this? Absolutely, you can do. Okay. Yep. yep. And uh, Lakshmi, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so can you write small kind of SQL statements and then uh, can we validate the fields also? You cannot write SQL statements. You have to write uh, expression language, EL. Using expression language, I can, uh, example, let us say, if the person, uh, example last name is there let us say if person is from mexico okay if person legal legal employer is a mexican legal employer show the last name as some paternal name example i'm saying okay if it is mexico show it as a paternal name if it is anything apart from mexico show as a last name it's a logic conditional logic there if it, if country is mexico show like this if country is not mexico show like that a small if else condition that condition can be written in the expression language el and we can modify the properties so it'll be a part of this uh, training will be el also will be covered absolutely yes yeah, absolutely that's a very fundamental uh, we need to cover that so okay so let me let me we i didn't cover what i'm going to cover so basically there are many things which i need to explain i, I covered in my demo what i'm going to cover in my sessions basically so um, I would say I would I would recommend you to go to the demo and uh, look at what topics I'm going to cover. And uh, for your question, yes, I'm going to cover all that, uh, all the security. I'm going to cover what security roles we have and how it works in the fusion and how what kind of integrations we are going to do for uh, low to medium volume of data, high volume of data. What kind of integrations we are going to do? I'm go we are going to I'm going to show all these things in my uh, classes and also outbound integrations. How many ways we can do the outbound integrations? I'm going to cover this, and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, outbound integration with middleware and without middleware. How does it work? And uh, reporting tools, OTBI and BI reporting tools, and also I'm going to show the smart view for finance and. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, we'll be seeing the BA publisher, multiple reports, how we can uh, pull out all the fusion applications and extending fusion applications, how many ways we can extend the fusion applications, different tools using the page composer, application composer, and how many, what kind of codes we, coding we are going to write in extending the fusion applications using the expression language or Groovy code. So uh, HTML, JavaScript, web services, we're going to see that. And also we're going to see the, uh, ADF part as well, application development framework, creating the pages. And we are also seeing the workflows as well, BPM. So I went very fast. So basically, uh, these are all the things I'm going to cover. What I do, I will share this PPT again with you. And I 
think you already got the video from uh, Ravi on uh, uh, our de my demo. In the demo, I have covered uh, all these things in that in detail. So um, tomorrow, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start again uh, with the Fusion uh, navigations and uh, uh, typically how the Fusion navigation work and uh, what are the components involved in the Fusion navigations and uh, and then I'll start with security, like uh, what data and which data, how we can see, who can see, that kind of things, basically. So uh, that's the schedule for tomorrow. So, Lakshmi, uh, <clears throat> this is from Monday to Friday, right? This is Monday to Friday. That's true. Yeah. And how many how many classes are there in this training? So I was assuming thirty-five to forty-five hours. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. Yes. 35 to 45 hours, not classes. Uh, not classes, that's true. Because they are taking one and a half hours every day, right? Correct, correct, yeah. Okay. Okay. Lakshmi, we are from the, we have taken a corporate training for the functional from Ravi. Okay. Yes, we have attended the technical part. We have five people from the same company. Perfect, okay. perfect. So, uh, we predominantly uh, look at the finance part, uh, okay. not on the HRMS, HCM part of it. So please uh, uh, request you to align to the uh, finance part, please. Sure. Uh, I have it in my mind. Yeah. So as and when I'm, I get chance, definitely I will be keep uh, talking about the, I mean, take, take examples from the finance specific area and uh, keep showing it. Okay. That's fine. Now. Thank you. Uh, and uh, lastly, one more thing: uh, Are you going to get uh, day-wise recordings uh, for us? Because uh, to follow, means like let us say during practice, we stuck somewhere. We can okay. go through the recording and we can. So, uh, uh, are you going to get day-wise? So it will be helpful for us. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to. I will. I will. I, I think you will be getting the day-wise, but I will confirm that with Ravi. I mean, I would recommend you as well to speak with Ravi on that part. Basically, how does it work here? Is uh, every day when I get the recording, I will uh, deliver it to Ravi. On daily basis, I won't. Uh, I won't do on a weekly basis like that. I spoke to Ravi on this, but what he has told is means you may not get day uh, sessions for this uh, training sessions. Previous sessions we can share like that. He has told to me. Uh, I will talk again on that, Ravi. Basically, basically these sure. sessions maybe we talk more about uh, uh, all kind of examples, right? Finance. Exactly. So it will be helpful for us uh, for our practice. That's what I'm trying to ask. Sure, I will check with Ravi on that. Thanks, Lakshmi. Right. Uh, Lakshmi? Yeah. Yeah, Basha here. Uh, actually, for inbound and outbound uh, mm -hmm. thing, we need uh, Excel sheet, right? Excel and... Mm, Excel is one example, actually. There are many ways we can we can do the inbound outbound integrations. It's not okay. one way. So, Excel is, is one way. Okay, if you see that... Okay. Uh, if low to medium volume of data spreadsheet loader is one way, but if it's high volume of data, we have file based data import, HCM data loader is there. If you okay. automate that, you can use Soapress and desktop services. And apart from this, we have other specialized data loaders. Uh, so I'm going to cover all these things in our uh, inbound integrations. Yeah, sure. Actually, because I don't have Microsoft Excel. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. That's why any possibility of showing the end-to-end -end integration, any possibility if you have something, uh, it's not mandatory. I feel uh, like HCM on premise and uh, sorry, uh, e-business suit on the premise and HCM on the cloud. It yeah, we can, we can, we can, I mean, we can take a couple of examples. End-to-end -end means, you know, right, there are hundreds of components will be there, but we will take a few examples definitely. And uh, uh, we can, uh, I can, um, I have done that before as well in my previous batches to integration between EBS and Fusion. May not be all the components. Some components I can show how we okay, did. As a team, uh, we have five people. As I told you that this will help us to uh, to understand what is going on. You know, wherever oh. we have to optimize to integration to the cloud, probably we'll come to know that what actually are the uh, challenges. You know, so absolutely, absolutely, sure. It's, it's possible. It's not mandatory. If anything possible, or if it can showcase, that would be great. Yes, that's so yeah, definitely we can do. Um, um, yeah, definitely we can. I will talk to you on that. Basically, no, we, no. we need we need it's like uh, we need more inputs on that from you as well. So as and when we go 
And one more thing is that uh, because uh, we log in a time for one and a half hours, uh, we'll try to stick to the time frame because again the people have come back to the office. So let's yeah, try to stick to the yes. If you want another 15 minutes early, also that's fine. But we have to wind up at 8:30 so that people can. Absolutely, go back. absolutely. I will. I will make sure that I abide to that rule. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So yeah, if. Uh, uh, you don't have any other questions, then uh, we can wind up. Hello. Yes, Naraya. Actually, I have the two questions because I'm totally from the different background. What is the function? What is the function? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I will cover that. If uh, uh, any, if anyone want to listen, you can stay in, or if, if you don't want, you can drop off. So, what is the question? So, Naraya, question is: What is the difference between technical and functional? So, so now I know the difference is the, the functional, it's like, as we know, a SaaS is an application, is a software as a service, right? So, product gives that out of the box product to us. Once they give that product to us, what we need to do, we have to make it to work for our company. To make it to work for our company, we cannot use it just like that. We need to know out of the functionalities what is coming out of the product how to make those functionalities to work for our company maybe some of the some of the functionalities are not needed which were given by the oracle and some of the functionalities are tweaked to accommodate our uh, uh, accommodate our uh, needs basically example oracle has given 10 fields out of the product and our company is the our company uh, uh, whatever 10 fields is getting out of the box that's not enough we wanted to have more fields added on top of it so they're actually how what why do we need the additional fields that the functional person decides why do we need the additional fields and how to populate those additional fields will be done by the technical person either Pulling the data from outside system into the fusion, or are populating that data automatically based on some some other conditions. So the functionality will be decided by the functional person, and technicality technical person works once the functionality is decided. That's one example I'm saying. So uh, uh, any process, any out of the box software process to tweak that. To make it work, it's the functional person's responsibility. That person should know what is that fun, what is that uh, a module, and how does that module work. And technical person doesn't need to know what is that. What our technical person should know what what data has to be imported and what data has to be exported. That data will be given by the functional consultant, and they will give us, hey, this is the data you have to export out of the system. Hey, this is the data you have to import into the system and you have to load this data to this field load this data to this field that's the that's the specification given by the functional consultant and technical consultant will make sure it will work and functional consultant will say that you have to load data you have to send data to the payroll vendor every two weeks and this is the data you have to send and technical person will come and write the payroll SQL code to pull out data from the fusion applications and prepare the file and send it to the vendor automatically every every week and how we send it they, whether they use the soap web services or they use the uh, use the daily nightly scheduled jobs how do they do that it's technical person responsibility similarly security profiles functional person will say that if this person if the hr is from china and working in some that location then that HR should be able to see the employees in that respective location only and they should not be able to see any other data. Some security profiles, they need it. Then what functional person will do, hey, it is the requirement. Please go and set it up accordingly. To, to set up the security as per the functional person needs is the technical person duty. Same thing the workflows. 
So workflows in sense, if uh, uh, if an employee is there, if employee mod changes the address of address of uh, his or her own, then what should it happen when the address is changed? A approval notification should go to some person. Example, our company approval notification should go to some our uh, our uh, administrator, HR administrator, and HR administrator should approve it. Then only whatever changes you did will automatically update it in the database. So what functional person will do? Hey, this is a requirement. Please go ahead and configure the workflow. So if it is straightforward, functional person can go ahead and do that. If it involves multiple combinations, multiple conditions, example, let us say if it is in China, then it should go for two people approval. If it is in China, if it is in uh, India and southern part, do like this. If it has mul multiple combination of approvals, then they will rely, and rely on the technical person to do that uh, architecture. There are many examples, same thing, the front end uh, fields, right? So as I said, when I was showing the last name in the screen, I wanted to show the last name as different thing for Mexico. Our last name is dif showing different thing for any other country other than Mexico. So if you wanted to satisfy those kind of needs, you have to rely on the technical person to personalize the screen or uh, modify the screen. Or they need, needed some needs like they want to create a standalone page where it will handle it will handle the uh, handle the uh, data differently, or create the read only read only page with some set of uh, standard fields. And you wanted to link the page in the Fusion application, some some stuff like that. Those again should be done by the technical person. So it's like. Typically, the technical work will be there during the implementation of the project. Once the implementation is done, not as I mean, we won't have that much dependence on the technical person, but uh, uh, it will be there for ongoing maintenance. Hope I answer your question. Yes, last question. Uh, you said we need to write the script. Right? It will be the predefined, or maybe it will be changes. Oh, uh, to write the scripts basically while loading the data into the fusion applications, uh, we have to write the scripts outside of the fusion application. Example, if you wanted to load data, as I said, if we have the finance, supply chain management, HCM in our uh, uh, in our on-premise, and we moved only HR to the cloud, and if they want, if these two cloud and EBS, if they wanted to talk together every day then from EBS, a data has to be generated and sent to the cloud, right? So to generate data out of the EBS, you have to write the PL SQL scripts or JavaScripts, whatever it is. And similarly, from the cloud, if you send the data back to the EBS or that from the cloud, you want to send data back to the custom application. In the custom application, you have to receive the data and write the code to load the data into the custom application. There also coding is needed. And while extracting data from the Fusion application, how do you extract the data? You have to write the SQL queries for there and uh, extract it and send it to the, uh, uh, and extract the data from the cloud. And similarly, uh, we have something called uh, Hatcher, we have something called fast formulas where you can write the programs in the fast formulas to do some uh, 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 logical work. So coding is, yes, very much there most of time but uh, but it means it will be predefined because generally i did the implemented for different products mm -hmm. the queries will be the same we no need to involve the much logic to write uh, not necessarily so if if your client is using everything out of the box fields then yes we don't need if the client uh, has custom fields or client tweak the process in the fusion applications, then you need to modify your SQL queries. Yes, I mean, whatever I have seen, no, it's not like uh, every every client has its own uh, processes. So yes, we have to, we have to implement uh, that accordingly. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. You cannot uh, use that. You can use the same query, but you definitely have to tweak it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay.
Okay, if uh, you don't have any more questions, then uh, we can drop off for now and we can connect uh, same time tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you.